Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Costa Rica's Minister of Tourism, Maria Amalia Ravelo, in discussion with Skift Global Tourism reporter, Rosie Spinks. Maria, thank you so much for being here today, and welcome back to our audience. Um, I want to invite everyone to submit questions during the session, which we will turn to in the last five minutes. So I think we have to start by giving credit where credit is due here. Uh, Costa Rica has been innovating around, thinking about, talking about, and enacting ecotourism and sustainability way before that was a buzzword or even an obligation, as it's becoming today. So how is Costa Rica keeping that pioneer status alive and communicating that to visitors today. Um, hello, good, uh, good morning to all of you. Um, Costa Rica decided years ago how to develop tourism in our country. Um, that was a decision we made with the private sector. And the way we keep it alive is working together. We work together with the private sector with a plan, it's a plan that we build together. It's not the government plan, but it's the tourism development plan. Mm -hmm. So the way to keep it is because that plan has a very, very strong uh, emphasis on sustainability. Mm -hmm. Before it was ecotourism, right. now we talk a lot more about sustainability. Right, yeah, I was gonna say, the, the terminology around this has kind of <laughs> developed since um, eco, I'm sorry, since uh, Costa Rica pioneered this. So we say sustainability now, which is still a kind of squishy term that's hard to define. But in the age of overtourism, one of the main ways we are defining that is the human metric and how locals feel about tourism. So how, how is Costa Rica ensuring that Costa Ricans feel good about tourism? We really have developed tourism in Costa Rica around small and medium-sized entrepreneurs. And that really, and just to give you a figure, 60% uh, of the hotel rooms are in less than 40 uh, rooms. Um, so that really keeps us the possibility of having this development all around the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, 20 years ago, we start working very close with all the concept of developing tourism with the communities. Mm -hmm. And we develop um, our, what we call the Certification for Sustainable Tourism, that now we are doing the 2.0, but before it was 20 years ago. And a very, very important part is working with the communities, helping the schools, painting the schools, uh, all the situation around wages, mm -hmm paying uh, wages that are uh, under our very strict laws. Right. And uh, that really was the, the, the point where we can, where we're able to develop and now we are continuing with this path mm -hmm. because we believe that you cannot have like five star properties in one star communities because, right. I mean, that, that doesn't work. Right. I mean, the only way to develop tourism in a sustainable way is really being sure that tourism is creating wealth, but not only creating wealth, distributing the wealth. Right. And really creating a, creating a better quality of life for the Costa Ricans. So how do you how do you know if that's if that's happening? How do you get that feedback from Costa Ricans? Two years ago, we start using the IPS index, the Social Progress Index, mm -hmm. in order to measure success. Mm -hmm. We really uh, before we measure success more like a number of tourists arriving, or we measure success on uh, the uh, how much uh, foreign, in, uh, how, many, how many dollars that the tourism produce. Right. But we really wanted to be sure that we were doing the right thing by measuring the quality of life. Mm -hmm. In that plan that I mentioned, we have 30 different uh, tourist centers. Mm -hmm. And we measure success of those tourist centers 
and that's the way we measure if, uh, if, if really tourism is creating a better quality of life for, right. for our people. And, and this is part of this shift from destination marketing to destination management. That's kind of the trend du jour in tourism at the moment and part of the title of this session. So, so do you think that falls under that, that sort of idea that it's not enough to just make sure more people come? It's really, uh, it's, it's not only the number of people that come to the country, but right. all we, we are really making a lot of emphasis in what type of tourism we want to attract. Mm -hmm. because we want to attract the tourism that will help us mm -hmm. take care of our country, of our beautiful nature, our values, our people, right. our children. Our... Right. So, I mean, it's, it's important that we, the, the message that we, we want to, 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 to show to the world is precisely not the numbers, that before it was the success mm -hmm. uh, story. We want to really... Uh, create a different story. So uh, we attract families, a lot of three-generation families that right. come and enjoy Costa Rica, not only the very, uh, let's say, more calm experiences to the most uh, adrenaline full right. and uh, 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 experiences. And, and that's what we, what we want to attract, right. families, couples, seniors, young people that want to really help us take care of, of our nature. And, and our I just want to add, you were just saying backstage that the, I think the average length of stay for a, a visitor to Costa Rica is 12 nights? 12 nights, which yes. Is, yeah. It's pretty high. We are a small country. Right. But the, 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 the beauty of Costa Rica is we can offer a great diversity mm -hmm. because we have very high mountains between two oceans. Right. So you can really do so many things in Costa Rica. Right. In, from adventure... Of course, all the activities you can do on the beaches, rainforest, cloud forest, dry forest. You can do all the rafting, volcanoes, visiting volcanoes. I mean, there is so many uh, activities you can do that uh, that's important too. Sure. So I just want to switch gears. An another part of the title of the session is the public-private partnership. So I'm just going to be honest. I think most people's eyes glaze over when they hear that phrase. Um, but we're going to make it interesting. So, so these frameworks certainly have their critics, right? Um, there is there is the idea that it, government becomes too cozy with the private sector, or that they may not produce projects in the public interest. Um, they can expose developing countries to high risk or debt. Um, and yet, the World Bank is a fan, and in Costa Rica, it's it's been sort of the framework that has been hailed as a big part of the success story. So can you make the case for the public-private partnership as a tourism development strategy? Yes, we work very, very close with the, with, the, with the private sector. And we have a lot of examples like, let's say, air service development. We work together with the airports and we visit airlines in order to, to present them all the business cases. And uh, we, we, we work together in these um, developing new areas in the country that we know that has a potential. So we are really working now not only with the private sector, with the Chamber of Tourism, with the local Chamber of Tourism. We're working with the uh, local uh, communities and working with the, with the, with the local government. Mm -hmm. So those are like, how can we develop these new uh, destinations into the country, how do we see them in five years, and what we, do we need to do in order to get there? Right. And uh, these are all, because creating this common vision was something that really helped us um, 25 years ago with the private sector on what type of model of tourism we wanted in the country. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was more like... Uh, very big hotels on the beaches, and um, it was not easy right. to, to really, because there was a lot of different interests at that time, mm -hmm. but finally we made that decision, and from that time, 25 years ago, we already have a clear vision and a shared vision with the private sector. Right. So if somebody get to my position, it's very difficult to really get away from that plan. Sure, it's how things are. Really, and we have had that consistency that Costa Rica being a, such a small country, sure. the size of West Virginia, a small country with 
we have really been able to create and to be consistent through the time on what type of tourism we want. Right, and so I wanted to talk about airports because I know your background is, uh -huh. is in that area. So in, last year the president sort of shelved a, a project for a, a big new airport that would have been a public-private partnership. And instead, uh, $160 million is being invested into expand capacity in existing airports. So can you, I know that decision comes from the Ministry of Transportation and not you, <laughs> but can you, um, can you talk a little bit about airport planning and the role that it plays in a sustainable, in building a sustainable tourism sector? Or are they a liability in the age of over-tourism in any way? I think that airports are the term, uh, very, very important in order to develop tourism. Uh, the point is that uh, we, we have developed a, a more, a plan that is in the uh, developing small airports all around the country right. to be able to have uh, domestic flights. Mm -hmm. Because as I tell you, the, 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 the possibility of the tourists to visit different regions mm -hmm. is a lot easier when you uh, fly by small planes. Right. So this is a big investment that the country is doing. And we are really analyzing the possibility of growing our actual airports. So that was the best way to make that investment, to uh, to strengthen the, the, the opportunities to make our actual airports better right. and to develop all these uh, uh, set of airports around the country. Right, so instead of getting a huge spike of visitors in a new big international airport, you're distributing them. Yes. The hope is to distribute them more. Yes. Okay, so Costa Rica welcomed over three million visitors last year. Um, I'm going to ask you a question that, I, in my experience, tourism officials don't like. Does Costa Rica have a carrying capacity or a maximum number of visitors who can visit before, before there's undue strain on the country? Our point is really working with the communities so we will be able to receive tourism the way we're doing now, but even more. I mean, all over the country. So what we are doing is working with these communities in this plan to develop new destinations into the country. Right. Let's say we're opening a new volcano to be visited, that is the Turrialba volcano, and we are developing new entrances to different parks. Right. Because we know that over tourism is, is a big challenge for destinations mm -hmm. and for successful destinations. But does the future of Costa Rica's tourism and destinations all over, does it mean turning people away at a certain point? Is that, is that how we meet this challenge? I would say that at this point, what we are doing is uh, developing new areas in the country that will be able to still grow. We don't want to grow at big numbers. Mm -hmm. We still want to grow, but we are thinking in growing between five and 6% per year. Right. But of, the most important thing is to distribute it through all, through all the country. Right. So we have areas like our South Pacific that we know that are more fragile and will never be, uh, we're, we're, we're not trying to have a big, big, big masses of tourism there. Sure. Uh, and uh, there are other areas that will be able to, to support more tourism. But the most important thing is to, to, to be able to have the whole country as a tourist destination, not an enclave type. Right, right. More like the whole So country. we'll kind of, cross that bridge when we get to it, maybe. We'll spread people out first <laughs> yes. and then, then get yes. there. Um, so Costa Rica has been a remarkably stable country politically, especially in a region that, that hasn't always been that way. And I believe it was 70 or so years ago when the military was abolished. How, how important has that stability been in, in Costa Rica's tourism success? It's been very important because when we talk about sustainability, it's not only tourism. Right. I mean, when we abolished the army uh, in 1948, that really gave the country the possibility to invest those resources in health and education. Sure. That really created a very different country from other countries in Latin America. Right, right. And that really permitted to have a middle class that is very strong, uh, very highly educated. If you see, as, as in general terms, the social progress index of Costa Rica, we are in tier two. Mm -hmm. We have an 80%, 80 uh, as, as, so that really shows that we, even though we are, um, uh, we have a, 
a per capita income of $15,000, mm -hmm. we have been able to convert that into quality of life for the Costa Ricans. Right. So that is really, uh, I think that, that decisions that we have done in the past and the decisions we want to do in the future, we are now working on a decarbonization plan. Right. In order to have Costa Rica decarbonized by 2050, mm -hmm. we already depend on renewable energies. Sometimes 90, sometimes 95% of our energies right. are renewable. So what we have the challenge now is transportation. Mm -hmm. And that is our plan in order to decarbonize the country to work on the carbonation, decarbonization. Yeah, uh, and I wanted, the, excuse me, I yes. wanted to point out that, it, um, you know, to, to us sitting in America, which is a country where a significant amount of people don't even think human caused climate change is a thing, it may seem unrealistic for a country to vow to decarbonize by 2050. But, um, but in fact, Costa Rica has, has pulled off pretty impressive environmental feats in the past. In the 1990s, deforestation was, was reversed pretty significantly. But I am curious, so uh, the president has said the decarbonization effort will address carbon pricing, transportation, industry, agriculture. I can't help but ask, how are you gonna offset the three, four million tourists who arrive on airplanes? Uh, that's, a, that's a big challenge <laughs> that I think we need to work together. Right. Together with the airlines, together with the travel sector, um, we know it's, uh, it's, it's, it's something we have to address, but I think it's more working together to, to really be able to offset the, uh, the, the carbon footprint that uh, travel, air travel uh, is producing. Right. So my last question before we turn to some audience questions, I hope, is tourist safety has become a, um, a prominent issue in Costa Rica lately. Can you speak a little bit about why that is and what you've done to, to address that? Safety is a, a very important challenge all over the world. And we have taken that very seriously. We have some uh, deaths uh, the year before, mm -hmm. and we have put all our effort to make that one of our top priorities. Mm -hmm. Tourist safety, we have done a lot of work with the private sector. We have um, worked together to, to start talking about security. Some, sometimes it's not easy to, to talk about uh, uh, security, but we were being able to make a lot of preventive security. We are working on an app. Mm -hmm. We are even building some uh, delegations for the police in Tamarindo. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are working very, very close with the uh, Ministry of Security and with the private sector to make Costa Rica a safer place. Sa safety includes uh, safety on the beaches too. Mm -hmm. We have a very long coastline and we are working together with the Red Cross to have more uh, lifeguards on mm -hmm. our beaches. Okay. So we are really making a more holistic approach on safety and uh, thanks God this year we have been, uh, we haven't had any situation like we faced. I'm year. glad to hear that. Yes. Okay, let's turn to some questions. Um, okay, I like the second one. What advice would you give to the Bahamas on pursuing the proposed private sector lead, private sector led rebuilding effort? Uh, the only way is to really sit together like three days and really agree on three or four important points on, on that vision. Uh, what I've seen in, in other destinations, I have more than 40 years working in tourism, and I've seen that sometimes there is not good communication. It's very difficult to have those, uh, I mean, to build that common vision. So it's very important to build that common vision in order to use the resources the best way. Right. Um, okay, I like this one at the bottom. I was going to ask something similar. How involved are you in the development of hotels and resorts that may not be sustainable? Because we should point out, I mean, in addition to Costa Rica's uh, history of, of, you know, backpacker hostels and eco lodges, there's also cruise ships, there's also, you know, all-inclusive resorts. So how do you 
how do you temper those or make sure that they, they align with Costa Rica's interests? All the hotels are welcome to have our sustainable uh, certification. Right. So it's very important. Generally, when a big hotel uh, wants to de develop in Costa Rica, they, they sit down with us because they know that sustainability is a trademark. I mean, mm. it's, it's our commitment, it's, mm. it's our base. I mean, so even though they are big, uh, they are willing to work together with us to be a sustainable hotel. Right. So we see different brands doing that and having five leaves that is the highest uh, level in the certification. Mm -hmm. So we got to the point to say that small is not good and big is not bad as long as we really share this vision on what do we want to do on the tourism industry. Sure. Okay, I think we have time for about one more. Um, do you see the potential for more local destination management organizations in Costa Rica? And is there a role that your ministry could play in, in developing and supporting them? This is another area we work uh, together. The Tourism Board has a very, very uh, strong, um, strong role together with the private sector to really uh, be able to develop these uh, Costa Rica's a tourist destination. So this partnership make it very, very strong. Local DMOs are part of our marketing committee. Okay. So we share with them how are we going to promote in different countries or different uh, cities. So we, we are, like I said, a, a big team and we work together. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being here, Maria. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. And...